Do you remember the day you were accepted? And right there, they called and said, just so you know, in the mail, there's an acceptance letter. I honestly just couldn't believe it. Do you remember the day you arrived? And you come in, and all of a sudden, there's five people screaming in your face. Can you believe how far you've come? Oh, I, I couldn't have dreamt of what I ended up doing at West Point. For 218 years, the United States Military Academy at West Point has graduated the finest young men and women in the country. Some of the greatest leaders in American history have studied and trained inside these halls. Today, in spite of challenges unlike anything the world has ever faced, I'm proud to say that the long gray line continues. Welcome to the United States Military Academy graduation 2020. I mean, I think more than anything, it's just gonna be a wave of emotion. You know, you see all these videos all the time of West Point cadets on their graduation day throwing that hat up, and for a while, it didn't seem like that would be something that we would have. All 1,100 of us on that plane are going to be together to throw up our hats. This graduation for us is a lot bigger than us. We're stepping into a profession where everything means a little more than us. We're representing all the graduates across America and even the world right now. This is the culminating event. I finally get to give the nation back what it's given me for four years. My role here as the superintendent is to provide the strategic compass for the United States Military Academy. My vision is that we are the world's preeminent leadership institute, and we do that by educating, training, and inspiring the Corps of Cadets. And so we do that every single day. We have the most important mission, I think, in the entire United States Army, because on day one, these young men and women are going to lead platoon-sized elements. We have to get it right. When I was uh, 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 getting ready to come to West Point, my father said to me, don't worry about it, it's gonna be just like the Boy Scouts. And it wasn't just like the Boy Scouts. But anyways, that's how he got me to come. <laughs> Our day, which is reception day, is a, uh, is a shock to the system. They're like, all right, you got 60 seconds. Say goodbye to your family. And I was like, Okay, I was like, oh no, the tears. I was like, I can't cry on our day. Like, this isn't good. My dad didn't cry, but my mom was bawling. Suddenly everyone's yelling at you. You've got all your bags. Are you ready to be a cadet at the United States Military Academy? I just remember being like, I am ready to be a cadet at the United States Military Academy. It's pretty shocking. You know, you kind of say to yourself, so why is this person being so mean to me? <laughs> So it was a little more tough for me because I showed up with a big, bright red cello case in my hand. You know, they, they definitely didn't give me an easy time because of that. You sit there and you wonder, what have I gotten myself into? But I think it also sets the stage because it's like, hey, this is serious. I think that it's to give you, like, an immediate stressor of, like, hey, like, this is what Beast is going to be like. You're going to be stressed out, you're going to be uncomfortable, and how are you going to respond to it? Are you going to freak out? Are you not gonna be able to take the pressure? People say that West Point will find your weakness and expose it and make you get better at it. I thought they were supposed to find one, but they found all of them. From the first day of Beast, it hit me square in the face. I was the, my school, my high school's valedictorian. I was the team captain on all three of my teams. You know, I, I was successful and I was not used to failing. And when I encountered failure here, it just, made me question my whole life. They all arrive here at the very top of their class, uh, and then they get humbled really quick. I literally looked in the mirror that night and reflected on who I was. There's no real way to prepare for Beast. I think the best way to prepare for it is to have everything that they tell you to have and just go through it with an open mind and just understand, hey, look, everybody who graduated from here, everybody who's doing this to me now, 
and everybody after me is going to go through the same experience. You know, I had doubts about why I was there <laughs> the first year, and, and everybody's going to have those. And just the time pressure. You went to the mess hall for breakfast. You went to your first class. You came back. You marched to lunch. There wasn't time in the day where you could just say, oh, OK, I think I'll just go for a walk. You know, <laughs> it wasn't in the cards. <laughs> well, the plebe year is an extraordinarily formative experience for the cadets, and it's, and it's meant to be hard. There's no point in fighting it. You just got to suck it up and do it. <laughs> Everybody did it before you. At least for me, I learned what my true capacity is. The indoor obstacle course is a tremendously challenging uh, physical fitness event. And it's one of those things that every graduate remembers and talks about. And, uh, uh, and that's because it's tough. So that, for me, was, I think, my biggest physical challenge coming here at West Point. That was something that I really struggled with uh, when I got here at West Point. First time I ran in front of everyone, there was 300 people in the room, and I ran up to the shelf, and I just couldn't get up on the shelf. And here, I tried it six different times. I called my dad, and my dad's like, you just got to practice. Just like you practice your cello, you know? You can't play a song on the first day. And so for me, that was every single morning at 5.30 until that next IOCT, I was going to practice the IOCT. Your nerves and your guts in the ball, but somehow you fly across the monkey bars and climb up the rope and you get it done. And I ran and I just remember saying, everything you've got, give it a little more. And I got up there, sprinted, and I clocked in the time and I got an A on the IOCT. With everything we do at West Point, it's not you failed at X, it's why did you fail at X and how did your actions leading up to it and how you dealt with that failure will really define you and, and, and what you're gonna do with that moving forward. A lot of lessons in leadership, at least in my experience, have been when I've struggled or when I've failed or when I've had a difficult time. You experience failure and you learn to overcome it. And that's important because you're gonna have to lead through both uncertainty and adversity out in the Army. We have our great pillars here, our academic pillar, uh, our military pillar, our physical pillar, and the most important one is our character pillar. And it's well-defined in the cadet creed. It's about someone who chooses to live above the common level of life and someone who chooses the harder right over the easier wrong in the thick of things. I'm a great Navy fan for 364 days a year. One day a year, they are your enemy. It's maybe one of the most important days of the entire year at West Point. My favorite memory, and this might be uh, contrary, but you might hear coming from the dean, <laughs> but my favorite memory was beating Navy. <laughs> Defining moment in my cadet career. Lost my hat on the field, never got it back. I saw grown men cry, old grads crying at, at the game <laughs> because they're so happy. Tears of joy, you know, it's, it's crazy. People might think that's goofy because it's just a sports game, but it really, since it means so much more to people, um, it really took an impact on this place. The entire game feels like it's hanging in the balance on every play. Until you are in it and you realize that there are people in Afghanistan, in Egypt, in Germany, all over the globe, um, from both sides, right, glued to their televisions, uh, that is like their Thanksgiving and Christmas rolled into one. You don't miss that game. I think it's the best rivalry in sports. And that rivalry has made each of us better. When we look back at the class of 2020, you know, we're going to be the year that we broke that streak. And, you know, winning the year after and the year after, you know, we really had a lot of momentum in football. Winning plea year was everything. Plebe year is supposed to teach you how to be a follower. Beast is supposed to teach you how to be a follower. But yuck year is your first attempt at leadership, and it can be very challenging. But you come to West Point because you want to learn how to lead. They give you that opportunity to, to practice and fail at every level. You become a team leader, so you're in charge of two or three people. You have to be a team leader to that plebe who doesn't really know how West Point works yet. 
So you can you can figure out, you know, how do I want to communicate with people? What type of leader do I want to be with just one person? Then all of a sudden you do it with five people or six people. And if I messed up, you know, I could go talk to a mentor like General Buzzer and say, hey, you know, can you help me walk through what I did wrong here? Part of being a good role model is one, admitting when you make mistakes and, uh, and sharing your own failure and helping them understand that uh, we're always learning. You know, the day you stop learning is, is the day you should stop leading. I think there's a difference between being a boss and a leader. So just because we have second lieutenant rank pinned on us when we graduate, um, our subordinates are looking for more than that. I think the biggest thing is empathy. You have to know what you don't know, and you have to be willing to learn from others. They can learn a lot by, you know, listening. The third year, they're really transitioning into more responsibility as leaders. And so I went from being in charge of one to being in charge of 100. And now your decisions are impacting the unit as a whole and not just one person. What defines a really good leader is usually not what they're doing when they're in front of people. It's what they're doing with their staff or with the people on their team. These young men and women are going to be in positions and levels of responsibility where there are no clear ways to figure out things. And they learn here from an academic sense, from a pedagogical sense, how to think their way through different frameworks. And they'll bring those frameworks to bear in the future in ways they don't even know. They get up at 6, they go to bed at midnight. Uh, they're taking a course load that is unrecognizable at most universities. I can't even begin to tell you the extraordinary talents of this class. So part of academics is grit, you know, sticking with something. Um, they have that grit. They're smart <laughs> and they're engaged and they're responsive. They always try to teach them to plan for something that they can't see around the corner. Cadets learn quantitative analysis. They learn engineering problem solving contexts. And this gives you the tools to look at problems from different angles. I'm an English major. I study literature. And literature, it's taught me that perspective is the most important part of life. The opportunities I've had at West Point have been once in a lifetime experiences. I got to do the crisis negotiation course with the negotiation project. I learned Russian in the Republic of Georgia and Armenia. Going to Italy and working with the multinational summit group. This particular class, the class of 2020, I've been so impressed uh, with their extraordinary talents. My senior project was presenting to STRATCOM, which is the Strategic Command of the Army, on hybrid warfare. We give them the tools to continue to grow and to develop in every which way. Every cadet at West Point wants to be as successful as they can be, and each cadet has a different mission. I got through day-to-day -day West Point because people helped me out, you know, in the academic realm just as much as I was able to help them out in the military realm. The things that I'll remember the most from my time at West Point are the military competitions I've been able to do with my military skills team. Through the black and gold team, I've been to a, um, a military skills competition in Mexico twice. The best place to train is at the threshold of failure because that's where the most growth occurs. Sandhurst is an annual international military skills competition. We invite teams from all over the world and they come here to West Point to compete over two days. Challenges such a wide breadth of military skills, all aspects of fitness, strength, endurance, speed. And we actually won Sandhurst for the first time uh, in a long time, uh, the class of 2020's plebe year. I'm tremendously impressed with this class. You go all the way back to when MacArthur was the superintendent here, and he said, every cadet, an athlete. West Pointers come here to learn how to fight. Those traits that you get through competition, tenacity, grit, toughness, resilience, all of those qualities are gonna make these young men and women uh, better soldiers. When I think of the class of 2020, They've turned the tides, a lot of our sports, you know, our, our track and field and cross country teams, I think they've, they've accounted for 75 new academy records over their four years here. This has been the best experience of my life. The class of 2020 has left this legacy. It's given me an opportunity to not just follow, but to also lead, serving in the capacity as a team captain, but also just being able to see my fellow teammates succeed on the track.
the young women who are graduating today from women's lacrosse. They're the first recruited class in the history of the women's lacrosse program at, at Army West Point. I think sports really helps you to know that, you know, you're going to fail sometimes, but that's okay. It's how you get up and you continue moving that matters the most. What does it mean to get that tackle or to stretch and make that touchdown? It happens through discipline and practice and determination and grit and resilience. Those are all the traits we want in officers. To win once gave us the confidence that we could, we could do it again, to win again and to win again. Finishing in the top 25 for the first time in two plus decades. The culture's strong, the team's strong. Army football's back. The wrestling team under Coach Kevin Ward uh, truly transformed since his arrival here. So we had multiple individuals ranked top 15, 10, 20 in the country. We beat Navy four times. That's the first time in program history. Beating them four times in a row, it's so satisfying. It's not necessarily just the fact that we beat Navy all four years. It's the way that we did it. Winning is very, very important at the United States Military Academy. And, and not only winning, but winning the right way. Winning with, with honor, winning with a sense of values. Very, very important that we win the right way. So our team has a saying, it's like chasing greatness. Chasing greatness, that's, that's a big part of the program. You know, it's a mindset. It's that constant pursuit of greatness. It wasn't just the narrative of being a good wrestler. It was being a great cadet, being a great student, being a great person. I think the happiest person I've ever met by far. So Chris was so nice that whenever he started wrestling as a kid, his grandpa pulled him aside and said, hey, you can't be this nice whenever you're out on the wrestling mat. You cannot, you have to be tough. So whenever you step out on the mat, you're gonna have an alter ego. Your alter ego is gonna be Charlie. And Charlie's the meanest, toughest individual that you've ever met in your life. And so he told him, before you step on the mat, say, je suis Charlie. It means I am Charlie in French. I think that also just speaks to Chris's character. I mean, he had to give himself a whole new identity just because he didn't want to hurt people. It was a land navigation day, and that's when the accident happened. That was June 6th for us. There was, it was a very emotional day, and... I got it on my arm. It's a... Uh... It's the, the date that he passed in Roman numerals, and then uh, a t this, is, this is a saying he had on his chest. We've overcome some challenging times here at West Point. The death of CJ was particularly you know, difficult for our class. The world kind of just stopped. There was somebody who wasn't gonna come back. CJ was part of my um, Beast platoon. You know, when I showed up to Beast, he was the guy that looked a little more handsome than me and could carry a little more than I could and was a little more happy than I was. He was a lot more in a lot of aspects. You just don't think about it until he's gone, but he's always positive. He's always a great, great friend, teammate. He's tough. I mean, as, as tough, as tough as, as they come. I never had felt that much power, that much raw power in, in someone that I've, I've wrestled. I mean, there, there were times where he would blast me off my feet, and I was a weight class above him. It's just hard to see a family go through that. I just hope that they can find peace in us carrying it on for him. Coach Ward said, we're going to talk about it. And the reason we're going to talk about it is we don't want to forget. We want to live like Chris. We want to do things that Chris would want us to do. What was remarkable is I think about the, the specific wrestling season that we had. You know, we qualified the most wrestlers in school history to the NCAA tournament. And what we accomplished this year was for Chris. When they get into that third period of a, of a tight wrestling match, they've got CJ Morgan on their back. Every single time I stepped out on the mat, I was thinking about him. I learned a lot from a lot of different people here at West Point. But I think I've learned the most from CJ.
I think humility is essential to be an army officer. Um, you're looking at the people to your left and right, below you and above you, to always constantly learn. Humility, it just, uh, it shows that you genuinely care. You can't, you can't fake that with soldiers and have the confidence to have good people around you, smart people around you, smarter people around you. Getting through West Point, it's about finding your own strengths and weaknesses and surrounding yourself with people who complement those strengths and weaknesses. And then you form the best team, and at the end of the day, you're a better leader. So first year year is that culmination. You're now the leaders of the Corps. You want to step away from first year knowing you're ready to join the big army. All right, how are we all doing out there? Branch Knight was so awesome. Branch Knight was, felt like the beginning of like that culmination of everything I had worked for, and everything my classmates had worked for. Class of 2020, hold up your envelopes. Let me see them, make sure everyone's got them. Hold them up to make sure you're ready to do this. Branch Knight's the night that you find out what branch you're going to serve with in the army. It was absolutely electric. You know, all my friends were feeling their envelopes. 2020, don your branch insignia! People just tore them open. Like, you could feel the suspense in the room. And everyone was jumping up and down, hugging and screaming. It was amazing. We were opening our futures. So I'm headed to flight school. I branched F field artillery. I am going to go aviation. So branch night, I find out that I'm going field artillery. And the next thing after that is, where am I gonna live? Post night is where you figure out where you're gonna go. So I'm sitting there, I'm waiting to take my pick of where I'm gonna go. I know I wanna be with friends, I wanna be with my family, um, but where my friends and my family wanna go is Kansas, and I'm from Missouri, and so in my mind, I'm going, no way I'm going to Kansas, no way. It won't be the, the location, you know, cadets worry about where they're gonna post. It's not necessarily the branch. It, it takes all of them to accomplish our mission, but it's 100% about the people. Looks like I'm going to Kansas. It's not just about, you know, the tactics, the techniques, and accomplishing the mission. It's about people. Leadership is about people. And then you get here and you realize that the people who really succeed in the classroom, on the field, are the ones that stop putting themselves first. I gotta say that I've been more than blessed to have friends and teammates who it seemed like sometimes the only job that they had that day was to make people around them happy. Yeah, you fall in love with the people, and uh, I surely did. Talk about a group that's, that's going into the real world having already learned how to overcome challenges, uh, how to adapt to an online learning environment. So the way the class of 2020 responded to this crisis has been nothing short of extraordinary. So. Learning how to lead in a virtual environment, that's tough, right? They had to figure it out. So I think when COVID-19 hit, it forced us to find connection in new ways. Oh, that's how you run a virtual meeting with over a thousand people on the net. We talk about demonstrating excellence. Uh, we talk about living honorably, leading honorably. Uh, this class has done that in spades. And the one thing that we really had to focus on because everything else was kind of on pause was, you know, how can we make sure everyone's doing okay? It forced us all to be a lot more compassionate. And we're learning how to lead through something like this. And once we leave, we'll have to continue to lead throughout this territory. They're demonstrating the resiliency and strength of themselves, of their class, of the Army, and of the nation to the world. Young Americans gravitate to West Point because they have this inclination to serve. They already have it, and West Point just strengthens it. And then when they're done, you know, they're ready to take charge. It's kind of an amazing uh, transformation. Over the years, I've, I've learned exactly what the Academy has meant to me meant to our class, how it's developed me as a person, as an individual, as a professional military officer, as a father. I owe a great deal to the academy and my classmates that helped me get through it.
you know, the first time that I got to meet them was on the march back during Beast. And here are some members of the class of 1970 who said, hey, you know, you may not remember me, but I'm going to be at your graduation in four years and want to make sure that, you know, we can be the best leaders that we can be. The 50-year affiliate class program, I think, was uh, instituted to give the new graduates a feeling and a, and a connection with graduates of the past and show them that there's not that big a gap in the basic foundational principles of what the institution stands for and what they're taking from it and what we took from it. And it's really inspiring, 50 years down the road, so willing and eager to come back, see each other, they're happy to see each other, they're happy to see us. When they come back here at West Point, they go right back to 1970, I'm sure. We are what they have been and hopefully what they have become. They get out there and they get things done. And it happens in the military and it happens after the military. It's just so big. There's West Pointers everywhere. I can go anywhere in the world and know that I have someone there that will have my back. People are pretty familiar with our famous graduates, but really the, the graduates who give me special motivation are these folks out in whatever town they live in, and they just continue to serve. As our alma mater says, grip hands though it be from the shadows. Once you're a graduate, you can identify the ring, uh, special bond. It's a representation of our connection to the long gray line. It has metal from our 50-year affiliate class, the class of 1970, and it also just is a symbol of all the officers who came before us and everything that is awaiting us. I feel like it's proper that the spirit of the American people, it's found here where so much history, so much legacy, so much greatness has come from it. It's truly an honor to be part of history in the making. West Pointers have led since 1802 here. They've led with honor in all of our nation's wars. This class will discover their own greatness over time. And it's important they understand the power of this place as they go out and lead our formations in the Army. If anyone's gonna be out there flying and protecting and leading, I want it to be me. Send me out there and let me help. I would encourage every parent out there to think back and just think about the growth that has occurred in those young men and women. From the day we first arrived to today, this class has adapted. And that's really gonna prove and show what this class can do moving forward. At the end of the day, this was a really hard thing to do. 47 months to really change a person. Their parents should be beaming from ear to ear. When you see your child go after their dreams, work hard, achieve, serving their country, leading soldiers. Doesn't get better than that. They're the best, and they really do represent uh, our nation. They're 100% ready. It's time to graduate. To the class of 2020, I'm so proud of you. You all are leaders, you all are winners. You're gonna do great things in our great army. Thanks for all you do, and God bless all of you.
United States Representative, the Honorable Steve Womack. The 24th Secretary of the Army, the Honorable Ryan D. McCarthy. The 40th Chief of Staff of the Army, General James C. McConville. The Assistant Secretary of the Army for Manpower and Reserve Affairs, the Honorable Dr. Casey Wardinsky. The Commandant of Cadets, Brigadier General Curtis A. Buzzard. The Dean of the Academic Board, Brigadier General Cindy R. Jeb. The Director of Intercollegiate Athletics, Mike Buddy. United States Military Academy Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Jack Love. And the United States Corps of Cadets Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Kenneth L. Killingsworth. I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. These are the words of the Army's warrior ethos. A set of principles by which every soldier lives. A code that defines both who we are and who we aspire to become. Each of you chose to come here, committed to becoming that 21st century warrior, committed to serving your country, 
Committed to defending freedom and our values. Committed to living above the common level of life. Committed to be a leader of character, exemplifying the motto, duty, honor, country. You have chosen a path traveled only by a few, a path that is challenging, a path that is demanding, and a path that is rewarding. You will learn how to think, and you will learn how to fight. More importantly, you will learn how to be a leader of tremendous integrity and character. You'll know what it means to lead honorably, to live honorably, and to continually pursue and demonstrate excellence. Each of you will join a proud legacy of American soldiers who answered their nation's call to serve in the crucible of ground combat. To lead, to fight, and to win. Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, thank you for joining us this morning as we come to you live from the beautiful and historic grounds of the United States Military Academy at West Point, the world's preeminent leadership development institution. Today, we honor the achievements of West Point's newly promoted graduates. Please welcome the United States Military Academy Class of 2020. Established in 1802, West Point is a national treasure and has been developing leaders of character for over 200 years, with each graduate exemplifying personal devotion to the ideals expressed in the West Point motto, duty, honor, country. This year, graduation is being held on the parade grounds, commonly referred to as the plane. The plane sits 150 feet above the picturesque Hudson River, and over the years, it has served various functions to include drill and cavalry mo movements, summer training encampment, and sports venue. 
Today, the plane serves as the primary location for cadet reviews and outdoor ceremonies at West Point. Hello, everyone. I'm Secretary of Defense and fellow West Point graduate, Mark Esper. Congratulations to the United States Military Academy's graduating class of 2020. Today, you joined the Long Gray Line during a pivotal time in our nation's history, and I know that your education and training have prepared you to be strong leaders of character, competence, and courage. As commissioned officers in the world's finest army, I encourage you to take inspiration from the brave soldiers who serve before you, and I expect you to remain committed to our core values, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. These principles will guide you in challenging times and in the face of new and emerging threats. I am confident that each and every one of you are ready to serve the nation and defend the United States and our interests at home and abroad. Thank you for being a part of the world's most capable and lethal fighting force ever known. I look forward to watching you lead. Congratulations. Hi, everybody. This is Senator Chuck Schumer. It's my honor to address the faculty and staff, the friends and families of the graduates, but most of all, you, the West Point Class of 2020. Congratulations. Now, as we all know, these are truly difficult times, perhaps more difficult than most of us have ever experienced. But not even a global pandemic can disrupt or delay the long gray line. This virus has attacked many things. It has scaled and subverted many defenses, but it cannot infect or weaken or kill those eternal values that make this institution a unique force for our nation. Duty, honor, country. Our society will overcome this challenge, and so will you. And when the worst is over, we'll need your help to rebuild our country even stronger than it was before. You are our future leaders, and we have faith in you. So I say to the graduates once again, congratulations, good luck, Godspeed, and go Army. Hello, I'm Senator Jack Reed of Rhode Island, the ranking member of the Senate Armed Services Committee. And I want to congratulate the class of 2020 from the United States Military Academy at West Point. You have earned this day. And also, this is a chance for you to thank your parents and your friends and your family and all those who helped you get through the point. You will, in a few short weeks, have the greatest privilege that any American can have, the privilege of leading American soldiers. And we are all confident that you will do it well. You will do it with the courage, the dedication, the integrity, and the decency that has carried you through West Point. We're very proud of you. As an old grad, I'm particularly proud of you. But let me say to the class of 2020, we know with vision you will lead. Thank you. Hi, I'm Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney, and it's my great honor to represent the many cadets, faculty, active duty soldiers, and alumni at West Point, right here in New York's Hudson Valley. In fact, this is my backyard, and the United States Military Academy is right over there. So I hear the cannon every morning and every night, and it's a wonderful way to begin and end my day. And it reminds me of the motto of duty, honor, country that all of you are committed to. You know, those are more than words. They're words to live by, and you all live by them. And that means you're leaders in our society. And we need leaders now more than ever in these difficult times when we face so many challenges and divisions. We look to you, our young leaders, who represent the values and the decency and the integrity that we so desire in all of our national institutions. So here's to you. Congratulations to the West Point class of 2020. And uh, be Navy. I'm General Abe Abrams, Commander, United Nations Command, Combined Forces Command, and United States Forces Korea. West Point class of 1982, the select few. On behalf of our three commands here in Korea, I congratulate the West Point class of 2020 for their hard work and resiliency on their graduation and commissioning as officers in the United States Army. Standing next to me is Command Sergeant Major Tag. While he's not a West Point graduate, he is my senior enlisted advisor and my most trusted confidant. As you enter the ranks of our great Army as second lieutenants, you will learn to rely and depend on your enlisted soldiers and NCOs to accomplish your mission. Trust their advice and experience. They will not fail you. Today, 
You are members of the long gray line and will lead our nation's finest and most precious assets, our people. We know that you are up to the challenge. With vision we lead, Army Strong. Congratulations to West Point Class 2020. You're about to be a leader of the greatest soldiers in the world. In order to be a leader, sometimes you have to be a great follower. And remember, trust works both ways. You have to trust in your soldiers and they have to trust in you. People first, winning matters. Rick Shitseki from the class of 1965. Congratulations to the class of 2020 on your graduation. Like all of us, you've spent your time at West Point preparing for the storms, the dangers, the demands you're likely to face during your service to the nation. Well, the first of those storms arrived in 2020 in the form of a pandemic and the outrage being expressed over the killing of George Floyd. All of us share in that outrage. Already you being tempered for the leadership challenges you will inherit upon commissioning. Prepare to be better than we were at all of your responsibilities. Other storms will surely come uninvited just as they did for my class. Remember, accomplish your mission. Take care of your soldiers in that order. Support and defend the Constitution of the United States for all of us. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are promises you must help to keep for each and every one of us. You're going to do great. Good luck. This is Currently, the superintendent of the United States Military Academy shares some of the history of West Point with today's guest speaker inside Quarters 100. Built in 1820, Quarters 100 is one of the oldest surviving buildings at West Point and has served as the superintendent's residence for 200 years. Center, face, take seats. Dance, take seats. Sound attention. Class, attention. This, attention.
In honor of today's guest speaker, the President of the United States, the United States Military Academy Salute Battery will now render a 21-gun salute. Present arms. States, present arms. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, accompanied by the Superintendent of the United States Military Academy.
Order. Arms. Un. Cover. Dais. Un. Cover. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Matthew Povlakovsky will now offer this morning's invocation. All seeing God, we gather here on the plain and online to celebrate the graduation of the class of 2020. With vision we lead expresses their worldview that leaders of the future have a responsibility to have a vision and to see that vision through. For without a vision, the people perish. So make us, Lord, instruments of your peace, that walls of pride and prejudice may cease. Where there is darkness, let us bring light. Where there is despair, hope, and life. Where there is confusion, clarity. Where there is hatred, charity. Help us desire less to be understood than to understand. And with this vision, to renew the spirit of our land. Amen. Dais, take seats. Take seats. Tomorrow, June 14th, marks the 245th Army birthday when we recognize the American soldiers' bravery, serving and protecting our nation. At this time, the West Point Band, under the direction of Lieutenant Colonel Todd Addison, will present a musical tribute honoring the legacy and history of our United States Army. Established in 1817, the West Point Band is the Army's oldest band and has been inspiring America's leaders for over 200 years. historic day, the West Point class of 2020 adds to the Army's story of 245 years of honorable service. From the birth of our nation, the American soldier has stood strong as bearer of the torch of freedom, protecting lives and rights of all people. The iconic legacies of West Point graduations, MacArthur, Patton, Eisenhower and so many others continue to inspire our diverse force which welcomes soldiers of all races, all genders, and all creed, whose varied experiences continue to make us the greatest army in the world.
We honor your support by continuing to fiercely safeguard our Army's most precious resource, its people, the American soldier. I'm just trying to be a father, raise a daughter and a son, be a lover to their mother, everything to everyone. Up and at them bright and early I'm all business in my suit Yeah, I'm dressed up for success From my head down to my boots And I will always do my duty No matter what the price I've counted up the cost I know the sacrifice Birthday, we recognize that the thread of our Army's legacy is inextricably woven through the fabric of American history. Today marks the continuation of our story, written by the Army's newest class of officers. West Point, class of 2020, the American people put their trust in you to lead with vision and character, to honorably uphold the legacy of the Army and our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 60th Superintendent of the United States Military Academy, 
Lieutenant General Darrell A. Williams. Mr. President, Congressman Womack, Secretary of the Army, Honorable McCarthy, Chief of Staff of the Army, General McConville, Assistant Secretary of the Army, Dr. Wardinsky, distinguished guests, staff and faculty, family and friends, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to West Point, a national treasure and historic landmark. And to the great class of 2020, with vision we lead, congratulations. Mr. President, thank you for being here today. We know you share our pride in these incredible new leaders. The class of 2020 has a special message for you. Class of 2020, on your feet! Go Army! Have a seat. Today's ceremony is unusual in a number of ways, most notably the physical absence of family and friends to cheer on our graduates. However, there is still a celebration, and we're thrilled to share it with friends, family, and the entire nation through a live broadcast made possible through the support and generosity of several of our alumni. To them, I would like to express my deepest appreciation and thanks. I'd also like to thank the members of the class of 1970, the 50-year affiliate class, for their support and mentorship to these young men and women over the past four years. You have demonstrated the strength of the long gray line as you gripped hands with the class of 2020, demonstrating the unbreakable bonds that link West Point's past, present, and future. And to the moms and dads, guardians and grandparents, brothers and sisters, boyfriends and girlfriends and fiancés, friends and well-wishers, thank you. Thank you for the love, support, and encouragement you've given these outstanding young men and women throughout their lives. I'd also like to remember someone who is here with us in spirit today, your classmate, our teammate, and our brother, C.J. Morgan. C.J. was an outstanding cadet athlete, an exemplar of West Point values. We miss him, but I know his memory and example will be with you wherever you go. Class of 2020, today marks the culmination of your West Point journey. You came here with the desire to serve and to be part of something much larger than yourself. You encouraged, helped, and loved each other as you became brothers and sisters in arms. As a class, you have completed the world's most challenging, most demanding leader development experience, and you've done it with honor, with distinction, with excellence. Fulfilling your oath requires strong character. The West Point Cadet Prayer Challenges us, challenges us to always choose the harder right over the easier wrong. The phrase is easy to say, but often difficult to do. Your challenges ahead will require moral and physical courage. In our great army, there are soldiers awaiting your arrival right now, wondering if their lieutenant will be worth following. Their loved ones wonder if you will care for their soldier. Your character and leadership are essential for answering those questions. Be the officer worth following and take care of your soldiers and their families. Emulate those who have come before you. Leaders such as Ninninger Award recipients, Captain Lindsey Heisler and Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Meyer, who have marched upon these very grounds where we're gathered here today, leaders who have led in peace and in war. Today, you take your place in the long gray line as the newest officers in the United States Army, ready to lead, to fight, and to win on any battlefield. As our Chief of Staff of the Army, General McConville, says, there is no second place or honorable mention in combat. Winning matters. In joining the profession of arms, you carry on that proud legacy by committing yourselves to duty, honor, country. You are ready to rise to the challenge of completing the mission while building cohesive teams based on trust. 
Put your people first, always, as you protect and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. And as your class model compels you with vision, you will lead. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor to introduce the 45th President of the United States of America, the Honorable Donald J. Trump. Thank you, General. And hello, cadets. On behalf of our entire nation, let me say congratulations to the incredible West Point class of 2020. Congratulations. Everyone, have a good time. Enjoy yourselves, because we are here to celebrate your achievements, and great achievements they are. Let us also recognize your remarkable superintendent, General Darrell Williams, for his outstanding stewardship. General, thank you very much. Great job. Thank you. Few words in the English language and few places in history have commanded as much awe and admiration as West Point. This premier military academy produces only the best of the best, the strongest of the strong, and the bravest of the brave. West Point is a universal symbol of American gallantry, loyalty, devotion, discipline, and great skill. There is no place on Earth I would rather be than right here with all of you. It's a great honor. Across this hallowed plain have passed many of the greatest and most fearsome soldiers that ever lived. They were heroes who drove thundering columns of Sherman tanks into the heart of a wicked empire. They were legends who unleashed the fury of American artillery upon our enemies on remote islands and distant shores. They were titans who strode through cannon blast and cavalry charge and stared down our foes through great clouds of smoke and shrapnel. They were the Army Rangers who led the way up jagged cliffs, the airborne soldiers who rained down justice in the dark of night, the infantry whose very sight meant liberation was near, and the mighty forces who sent tyrants, terrorists, and sadistic monsters running scared through the gates of hell. No evil force on Earth can match the noble power and righteous glory of the American warrior. I have no doubt that the young men and women before me today will add your names to this eternal chronicle of American heroes. You will go forth from this place adored by your countrymen, dreaded by your enemies, and respected by all throughout the world. Someday, generations of future West Point cadets will study your legacy. They will know your deeds. They will celebrate your triumphs. And they will proudly follow your example. To the 1,107 cadets who today become the newest officers in the most exceptional army ever to take the field of battle, I am here to offer America's salute. Thank you for answering your nation's call. On this special occasion, we are delighted to be joined by Congressman Steve Womack, Secretary of the Army Ryan McCarthy, Assistant Secretary Casey Wardinsky, and Army Chief of Staff General James McConville, an old grad from the class of 1981. Let's also express our appreciation to General Curtis Buzzard, General Cindy Jepp, 
and all of the wonderful instructors, coaches, and faculty members who are continuing West Point's two-century tradition of unrivaled excellence. To all of the parents, grandparents, and family members watching this ceremony from your beautiful home, even though you could not be here today, we know this day could never have happened without you. Your love and sacrifice have given America these phenomenal men and women. Cadets, please join me in sending your parents and families the heartfelt thanks that they so richly deserved. They're all watching right now. Please. Thank you very much. The depth and breadth of the United States military's contributions to our society are an everlasting inspiration to us all. I want to take this opportunity to thank all members of America's Armed Forces in every branch, active duty, National Guard, and Reserve, who stepped forward to help battle the invisible enemy, the new virus that came to our shores from a distant land called China. We will vanquish the virus. We will extinguish this plague. I also want to thank the men and women of our National Guard who respond with precision to so many recent challenges, from hurricanes and natural disasters to ensuring peace, safety, and the constitutional rule of law on our streets. We thank every citizen who wears a uniform in selfless service to our nation. The members of this class have come from every state in our union. You have come from the farms and the cities, from states big and small, and from every race, religion, color, and creed. But when you entered these grounds, you became part of one team, one family, proudly serving one great American nation. You became brothers and sisters, pledging allegiance to the same timeless principles, joined together in a common mission to protect our country, to defend our people, and to carry on the traditions of freedom equality and liberty that so many gave their lives to secure. You exemplify the power of shared national purpose to transcend all differences and achieve true unity. Today, you graduate as one class, and you embody one noble creed, duty, honor, country. Every graduate on this field could have gone to virtually any top-ranked university that you wanted. You chose to devote your life to the defense of America. You came to West Point because you know the truth. America is the greatest country in human history. And the United States military is the greatest force for peace and justice the world has ever known. The survival of America and the endurance of civilization itself depends on the men and women just like each of you. It depends on people who love their country with all their heart and energy and soul. It depends on citizens who build, sustain, nurture, and defend institutions like this one. That is how societies are made and how progress is advanced. What has historically made America unique is the durability of its institutions against the passions and prejudices of the moment. When times are turbulent, when the road is rough, what matters most is that which is permanent, timeless, enduring, and eternal. 
It was on this soil that American patriots held the most vital fortress in our war for independence. It was this school that gave us the men and women who fought and won a bloody war to extinguish the evil of slavery within one lifetime of our founding. It was the graduates of West Point, towering figures like MacArthur, Patton, Eisenhower, and Bradley, who led America to victory over the sinister Nazis and imperial fascists. Seventy-five years ago, it was under the leadership of West Point graduates like the legendary General Matthew Ridgway that the Army was at the forefront of ending the terrible injustice of segregation. It was Army strength that held the line against brutal opposition and oppression from communism. And it has been thanks to patriots like you that America has climbed to new heights of human achievement and national endeavor. This is your history. This is the legacy that each of you inherits. It is the legacy purchased with American blood at the crest of Little Round Top on the crimson beaches of Normandy, in the freezing mud of Bastogne, and the dense jungles of Vietnam. It is the legacy of courageous, selfless, faithful patriots who fought for every inch of dirt, with every ounce of strength, and every last scrap of heart and drive and grit that they had. And they did it because they believed in the undying principles of our founding. They did it because they cherished their homes, their faith, their family, and their flag. And they did it because when they came to this school, they were taught to hold fast to their love of our country, to cherish our heritage, learn from it, and build upon it. That is what young Americans are taught here at West Point. That is the legacy that you carry forward as second lieutenants in the United States Army. And you must never forget it. Through four long years, you have honed your skills, trained your mind and body, overcome every obstacle, and earned your place of pride in the long gray line. You made it through the rigors of our day and beast, an intensity of CLDT and weeks of training in the blistering heat. You have pushed yourselves far beyond every limit imaginable. Some of you have even pushed the limits a bit too much. So for any cadets who have not finished walking off their hours, as Commander-in-Chief, I hereby absolve all cadets on restriction for minor conduct offenses, and that is effective immediately. Congratulations. <laughs> That's a nice one, isn't it? Don't you feel better now? <laughs> Surviving the 47-month experience is never easy, but only the class of 2020 can say it survived 48 months. And when it comes to bragging rights, no one can boast louder than the class that brought Navy's 14-year football winning streak to a screeching halt. You did that. I happened to be there. I happened to be there. That's right. That was a big day. I was there. 
You beat Navy and brought the Commander-in-Chief's trophy back to West Point for two straight years. So we say, go, Army, go. This graduating class secured more than 1,000 victories for the Black Knights, including three bowl victories, 13 NCAA team appearances, and a women's rugby championship with the help of somebody that I just met, 2019 MVP, Sam Sullivan. Fantastic job. Thank you. Fantastic. Five cadets won national boxing championships, and Odia Queen brought home two. Brendan Brown earned the title of powerlifting national champion. In academics, 38 cadets have earned fellowships to continue their studies, including first captain Dane Vanderwall, who received one of the most prestigious awards in academia the Rhodes Scholarship. Congratulations, Dane. It's a great achievement. Thank you. Congratulations. Great achievement. But no one modeled the values of the soldier scholar quite like Lindy Moradian. Lindy earned both the highest overall class standing and the highest physical program score. She has published scientific research in a prominent journal and set five new records on the athletic track. Lindy, incredible job. Where is Lindy? Where is Lindy? For somebody that did so well, they didn't give you a very good seat, Lindy. We have to talk about that. Congratulations. Right now, America needs a class of cadets that lives by your motto, with vision, we lead. We need you to carry on the spirit of the great General Ulysses S. Grant. Soon after assuming overall command, following three years of Union setbacks, General Grant encountered someone heading north to Washington during the Battle of the Wilderness. If you see the President, Grant said, tell him from me that whatever happens, there will never be no turning back. We need you to be as visionary as Patton, who as a young man in 1917 became the first soldier assigned to the Army Tank Corps. One month into the job, he saw the future writing. If resistance is broken and the line is pierced, the tank must and will assume the role of pursuit cavalry and ride the enemy to death. Under Patton's leadership, that's exactly what they did. We need you to be as bold and determined as the immortal General Douglas MacArthur, who knew that the American soldier never, ever quits after leaving the Philippines for Australia at a low point of the Pacific War in 1942, MacArthur famously vowed, I shall return. For two years, he then took great strategic risks, and placed himself often in personal danger. On October 20th, 1944, MacArthur stepped off a landing boat, strode through knee-high water, and proclaimed, people of the Philippines, I have returned. By the grace of Almighty God, our forces stand again on Philippine soil. He then called upon the island's brave people to rise up and join the fight. America's momentum was unstoppable. These great leaders were not afraid of what others might say about them. They didn't care. They knew their duty was to protect our country. 
They knew the Army exists to preserve the Republic and the strong foundations upon which it stands. Family, God, country, liberty, and justice. They were true, tough American patriots. That is what our country needs, especially in these times. And that is what you are. Each of you begins your career in the Army at a crucial moment in American history. We are restoring the fundamental principles that the job of the American soldier is not to rebuild foreign nations, but to defend and defend strongly our nation from foreign enemies. We are ending the era of endless wars. In its place is a renewed, clear-eyed focus on defending America's vital interests. It is not the duty of U.S. troops to solve ancient conflicts in faraway lands that many people have never even heard of. We are not the policemen of the world, but let our enemies be on notice. If our people are threatened, we will never, ever hesitate to act. And when we fight, from now on, we will only fight to win. As MacArthur said, in war, there is no substitute for victory. To ensure you have the very best equipment and technology available, my administration has embarked on a colossal rebuilding of the American Armed Forces a record like no other. After years of devastating budget cuts and a military that was totally depleted from these endless wars, we have invested over two trillion, trillion, that's with a T, dollars in the most powerful fighting force by far on the planet Earth. We are building new ships, bombers, jet fighters, and helicopters by the hundreds. New tanks, military satellites, rockets, and missiles. Even a hypersonic missile that goes 17 times faster than the fastest missile currently available in the world and can hit a target 1,000 miles away within 14 inches from center point. For the first time in 70 years, we established a new branch of the United States military, the Space Force. It's a big deal. In recent years, America's warriors have made clear to all the high cost of threatening the American people. The savage ISIS caliphate has been 100 percent destroyed under the Trump administration. And its barbaric leader, al-Baghdadi, is gone, killed, over. And the world's number one terrorist, Qasem Soleimani, is likewise dead. As Commander-in-Chief, I never forget for one instant, the immense sacrifices, we ask, of those who wear this nation's uniform. Already you have known the crushing pain of losing a brother in arms. Today we remember an extraordinary cadet who made the supreme sacrifice in an accident last year. C.J. Morgan. We're deeply moved to be joined by his father, Christopher Morgan and C.J. was something very special. Christopher is a Secret Service agent, a tough guy, great guy. Great son is looking down right now. Christopher, I want you to know that we will carry C.J.'s blessed memory in our hearts forever. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Tomorrow, America will celebrate a very important anniversary, the 245th birthday of the United States Army. Unrelated, going to be my birthday also. I don't know if that happened by accident. Did that happen by accident, please? But it's a great day because of that Army birthday. And as you know, the Army's first Commander-in-Chief General George Washington called the fort that stood on this majestic point the most important post in America. Its strategic location on the Hudson River was vital to our war for independence. If British ships gained control of this river, they would have divided our young nation in two. So American soldiers stretched a massive metal chain across the waters of the Hudson from West Point all the way to Constitution Island. I saw a piece of that chain. It's incredible. No enemy ship even dared try to cross. Every link in that great chain was formed from over 100 pounds of pure American iron, mined from American soil, and made with American pride. Together, those links formed an unbreakable line of defense. Standing here before you more than two centuries later, it is clearer than ever that General Washington's words still hold true. West Point is still the indispensable post for America, the vital ground that must not lose. And the survival of our nation still depends on the great chain reaching out from this place, one made not of iron, but of flesh and blood, of memory and spirit, of sheer faith and unyielding courage. Today, each of you becomes another link in that unbroken chain, forged in the crucible known as the United States Military Academy, the greatest on Earth. It has given you soldiers that you can rely on to your right and to your left. And now we are entrusting you with the most noble task any warrior has ever had the privilege to carry out the task of preserving American liberty. As long as you remain loyal, faithful, and true, then our enemies don't even stand a chance. Our rights will never be stolen. Our freedoms will never be trampled. Our destiny will never be denied. And the United States of America will never be defeated with the grace of God and the heroes of West Point. America will always prevail. Nothing will stand in your way. Nothing will slow you down. And nothing will stop the West Point class of 2020 from achieving a true and lasting victory. God bless you. God bless the United States Army. And God bless America. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. The class president, Joshua Phillips, will now come to the dais for the presentation of the class gift. Mr. President, on behalf of the West Point class of 2020, it is my honor to present to you the first class cadet saber as a token of our appreciation. That is so beautiful. Thank you very much. Right 
Please remain standing for the singing of the core, a cherished West Point song. It is second in importance only to the alma mater. The core was first sung at the graduation ceremony in 1911. Take seats. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dean of the Academic Board, Brigadier General Cindy R. Jeb. Class of 2020, your education has prepared you to be a leader of character, sworn to uphold the values embodied in our Constitution, so on behalf of the academic board, I present these graduates and recommend each as worthy of the Bachelor of Science degree. Will the members of the class of 2020 now come forward to receive your diplomas? Congratulations. Hi, I'm Coach Mike Krzyzewski of the Duke University Blue Devils. Congratulations to the graduates of the class of 2020. Wow, what an accomplishment and especially in this environment. You know what though? You've shown great resiliency. And now as you move forward as officers in the, in the greatest team in the world, show that resilience, show your adaptability, show your courage, and lead us in this new time. Congratulations. Hi, I'm Pete Dawkins. And as the president of the class of 1959, I want to extend my sincere congratulations and best wishes to you all. You know, I frequently recall the words of the Harrow School song, 40 years on, growing older and older, what will it mean to you 40 years on? Well, 65 years since our class graduated, it means more than you could ever imagine. Best wishes and God bless. Hello, West Point class of 2020. 
Secretary of State Mike Pompeo here. I graduated from this amazing institution and was commissioned United States Army 34 years ago. My time at West Point taught me about self-discipline, the pursuit of excellence, and the high calling of public service. It also taught me about camaraderie. Stay close to your classmates. They're likely to be some of your closest friends in good times and in bad. You will all now, forever, be part of the Long Gray Line. Congratulations. Congratulations. You make me proud as a fellow old grad. And never forget, beat Navy. First, we will recognize the honor graduates, beginning with the first captain and brigade commander, the class president, the class valedictorian, and the Army Athletic Association trophy winners. Dane A. Vandewall, first captain and brigade commander. Joshua O. Phillips, class president. Gavin P. McCulloughe, class valedictorian. Thomas E. Funk, Army Athletic Association trophy winner. Samantha K. Sullivan, Army Athletic Association trophy winner. Lynn D. Meradian. J. Alexander Albright. Michael K. Deegan. Nathaniel J. Slosser. Samuel D. Reichenthal. Truman J. Gabriel. Brian T. Savage. Haley M. Watson. Jordan D. Tevens. Kevin A. Rinkliff. Joshua M. Mooney. Benjamin J. Petrella. Thomas V. Morin. Zachary K. Danes. Samuel S. Humphreys. Seamus P. McGettigan. Sean J. O'Leary. Jacob M. Murdoch. Seth T. Barbro. Zachary H. Tarbell. John S. Gray, Jr. Murray L. Johnston, the fourth. Parker S. Peterson. Judson C. Haggard. Gartrell C. Bowling. Colin E. Parker. John D. Burke. Nerissa J. Sywitz. The remaining graduates will now receive their diplomas alphabetically by company. Members of the 1st and 2nd Regiments are seated on the south side of the platform to your left. Members of the 3rd and 4th Regiments are seated on the north side of the platform to your right. 1st Regiment, Peyton A. Boylston. 3rd Regiment, Tyler D. Abbott. Nako Katernor. Luke I. Argetta. 
Aaron J. Cho. Annette E. Bell. Marcus M. Cox II. Connor S. Binney. Rowan W. Crowley. Rashad D. Bolton. Juliana T. Dwarshak. Julia A. Kuhn. Joshua D. Dye. John C. Erskine. Jared D. Facet. Jason Fung. Christopher W. Forden. Catherine I. Hilbert. Nicholas H. Frank. Matthew S. Hopwood. Catherine S. Harris. Bryson D. Lacey. Christopher P. Jackson. Dove L. Landau. Denali A. Jackson. Lance A. L. Lawson II. Caleb K. Johnson. Deborah C. Makowitz. Christopher D. Landon. Nikita M. Paraverzin. Steve J. Lee. Jacob W. Poole. Trenton R. Leslie. Philippe T. Sanchez. Rihanna L. Lichtenthal. Lauren S. Schultz. Garrett M. Manley. Joshua I. W. Schwint. Maxwell T. McVicker. Robert J. Seals. Alyssa M. Milner. Caleb N. Scepter. Austin A. Morak. Ken W. Song, Jr. Daniel R. Newberger. Felix L. Thibodeau IV. Henry D. Newstrom. William W. Thomas. Riley Dub D. Page. Peter J. Valentus. Ryan R. Reesing. Madison R. Wadika. Joseph R. Ryan. Rebecca A. Weigel. Robert T. Santoyo. John H. Wilson. Benjamin S. Shire. Ryan M. Anderson. Ethan D. Shepard. Sylvan G. Blankenship. Roman C. Simpson. Ethan C. Bloom. Connor J. Sparks. Jacob T. Bachonic. Wesley J. Swain. Lindsey N. Bowen. Alejandro S. Tombrink. Preston M. T. Butler. Hannah M. White. Jack M. Carberry. Kelly N. Azinge. Cameron G. Connors. Davis M. Ben. Jacob L. Cortez. Jonathan W. Benson. Evan M. Crowell. Haven E. Bethune. Connor S. DeWitt. Drew P. Blair. Christian A. Figliola. Georgia E. Cervantes. Honor R. Fusselman. 
David R. Cooper. Christopher M. Gouin. Anthony J. Danalo III. Deidre A. Harvey. Braden H. Durian. Stephanie L. Johnson. Andrew G. Dytik. Connor L. Long. Luke D. Hodson. Gustavo L. Lugo Jimenez. William R. Huff. Logan M. Marcisson. Adam C. Hug. Duncan G. McAloon. Joseph E. Hines. Robert W. McCarvel. Kaylin P. Kahn. Chase T. Miller. Celeste V. L. Nichols. Joseph K. Kaiser, Jr. Brianna M. Romaine. Eric R. Lowe. Hannah H. Schwartz. Craig A. Myatt, Jr. John B. Sheridan. Michael A. Peoples. Keegan J. Smith. Dardrin Chin. Charles D. Stevenson. Brandon J. Rosenborough. Ryan N. Velez. Timothy M. Schmidt. Weishan M. Wong. John G. Shafovalov. Jaden G. Watson. Aralina Shala from Kosovo. Lucas J. Weiland. Noah M. Stewart. Michael E. Willis, Jr. Brent T. Towery, Jr. Jade S. Adler. Frankie G. Turner. Daniel H. Archer, Jr. Leah C. Turner. Reuben D. Arderi. Joseph T. Tusing. Stephen L. Barstow. Hunter C. Wallace. Denise S. Blackman. Jonathan R. Willis. Edward C. Shalafu III. Daryl K. Yamamura. Dylan M. Charlton. Jason A. Blackwood. Heaven Cho. Braden P. Blasky. Cooper E. Cohn. Kara L. Bowser. Stephen C. DeMoss. Samuel W. Brush. Matthew A. DiBiase. Jack M. Buell. Luke A. Early. 
Elliot J. Verbello. Fabiola Gonzalez. Joseph N. Dabbled. Hope N. Hack. Dorothy R. Dennis. Olivia M. Harvey. Jonathan M. Ellery. Jacob G. Hurtabees. Michaela C. Foran. Joshua P. Johnson. Ryan D. Herring. John Chandler P. Keene. Bernard Jenkins, Jr. Matthew W. Manone. Tyler J. Leary. Connor M. McDonald. Zachary R. Lenahan. Brody E. Miller. Rafael A. Lopez. Gabriel H. Parrish. Delaney A. Marbach. Jaywalk Park from South Korea. Cody J. Maynard. Montgomery E. Potter. Mia L. Melgoza. Evan M. Rademacher. Jacob E. Morgan. Paris M. Taylor. Aiden G. Mulligan. Noah C. Utley. Adam J. Euler. Carson M. Vilchak. Chase G. Prairie. Bradley L. Vonovich. Christopher W. Ritter. Thomas J. Weatherford III. Joseph P. Santoro. James C. White. Dylan D. Spencer. James C. White. Samuel V. Sutera. Ashley M. Wolf. Eric A. Tolofson. Jason M. Agslude. Adrian Yoon. Levi D. Baldridge. Francisco Sabreros III. Nathaniel W. Buss. Edmund S. Coleman. Jackson R. Farrington. Colin R. Cushing. Donna G. Funaro. Sean W. Fallon. Kyle E. Garwick. Palmer A. Fields. Nicholas N. Gishlian. Anna J. Fujinaka. Aiden P. Hanrahan. Peter M. Gonsalves. Charlotte O. L. Hereford. Jeremy D. Hammes. William N. Kimmy. Hunter S. Knavelbard. William T. Norp. Jin H. Kwan. Grover J. Laporte III. Tyler J. Lacosta. Travis C. Lee. Andrew T. Laflamme. Jacob D. Lemelin. Ian D. McDonald. Michael P. McGurdy. Gregory C. Madden. Leanna M. Mitchell. Ashley P. McCabe. James M. Murphy. Amira T. Muhammad. Ryan E. Murphy. 
Joseph P. Moore. Nicole B. Nettles. Charles D. Mosley. Derek A. Nunn. Brian J. Naramore. James A. Ritchie. Austin M. Nguyen. Andrew F. Rivera. James A. Niemeyer. Gray L. Sasser. Roman D. Aller. Riley M. Scott. Eden Elizabeth Phillips. Dehan Song. Helen F. Schroeder. Cameron C. Stephen. Alexander S. Wilkinson. Mitchell S. Stifler. Will C. Anderson. Austin R. Taylor. Michael J. Avalone. James E. Tweedy III. Brian C. Brooks. Ty C. Wright. Reed H. Burton. Morgan L. Yancey. June A. Copeland. Chase K. Alberts. Jacob M. Covington. Brandon A. Anderson. Peter B. Cox. Andrew C. Arnold. Peter W. Davis. Adrian M. Barraza. Anthony L. Del Tufo. Kaylee D. Breslin. Micah J. D. Montgomery. Dalton J. Burke. Riley J. Eck. David W. R. Dahlberg. Keegan M. Fitzpatrick. Robert T. Dunn III. Matthew N. Golombeski. Magdalena A. Amen. Alan Z. Gong. Jacob T. Ellington. Hogan T. Harper. William E. Espensheed. David B. Kim. Brian M. Gerstenfeld. Taylor D. Krug. Alexander J. Hopkins. Sawyer J. Madsen. Mohammed T. Iftikhar from Pakistan. Kale M. McCormick. Jacob W. Young. Charles O'Brien. Adriel E. Morin. Eva Koliani Obioman. Michael J. Nasta. Christopher B. Papa. Liam J. O'Hara. Jacob R. Phillips. Joseph L. Pierce. Matthew J. Robinson. Catherine D. Peterson. Felix G. Rosanegron. Rainier A. Porus. Michael S. Rudisil. Ely G. Quinlan. Julius T. Shepard. Abigail R. Smith. Lacey M. Swafford. Logan J. Smith. Benedict G. Watson. Zachary D. Sprecker. William D. Addy. Justin F. Stoll. Austin H. Beam. Jackson J. Serbic. 
Judson E. Booker. Alasia R. Thornton. Jacob H. Connors. Michelle A. Toure. Deanna R. Edgar. Jesse D. Whipple. Melissa R. Gammons. Simeon B. Willis. Brendan W. Gunther. Tyler J. Amison. Justin Jang. Jacob K. Baumart. Ricardo A. Jimenez, Jr. Evan C. Brunner. Eraldo C. John from Tanzania. Keegan C. Burroughs. Jacob S. Keith. Samantha M. Coletti. Joseph H. Kim. George E. Cox IV. Min Sung Kim. Layla W. Cunningham. John T. King. Jackson M. Deaton. James H. Larson. Philip R. Donner. Jacob F. Lapardo. Jason A. Green. Jonathan D. Lowe. Murray H. Greer III. Don F. McLaren. Kyle W. Hirschberger. Devon M. Moore. Alexia T. Shu. Elizabeth J. Orr. Ryan C. Jennings. Nicholas J. Perovich. Edward K. Kang. Margaret O. Redfield. Caleb M. Kiefer. Scott W. Sarson. Son J. Kim. Miles P. Silva. Gunther D. Clemus. Mitchell E. Slabowski. Grant J. Labasser. Jacob R. Stoffer. Matthew M. McDonough. Jackson P. Sullivan. Andrew J. Mergen. Michael J. Tierney. Austin J. Myers. Janelle M. Tracy. Macy K. Newberry. William Q. J. Walter. Scott J. Niebuhr. James A. Baglino. John H. Provost. Nathan M. Brooks. Stephen L. Robertson, Jr. Daniel H. Chung. Lily M. Ruland. Michael T. Clark. Daniel J. Salazar. Matthew C. Cohane. Jake T. Stokursky. Connor G. Helmendock. Brian J. Thornton. John F. Holman. Adia A. Underwood. Austin T. Kim. Paul A. Adams. Michael P. King. Zachary A. Aloma. Sarah J. Klena. Yashika A. Beckeru. Chance E. Kramer. Albert F. Beninati III. William S. Kwiatkowski. John F. Cahill. Joseph J. Kybers. Max D. Campoli. 
Madeline L. Miller. Stephen A. Salenti III. Robert P. Norwood. Joshua B. Couch. David H. O. Thomas I. Cruz. Sophie S. Parker. Gunner J. Doyle. Emma J. Paulus. Zebedee Ducree III. Joshua D. Roback. George C. Fair IV. John A. Stephen. Julia R. Gibbs. Bennett C. Taylor. Brady J. Golden. Toese G. Tia. Christopher J. Gregg. An B. Vu. Wuchal Kim. Owen D. Weisel. Seth B. Lozier. Iris W. U. Matthew A. Lugo. Alexandra K. Alakwa. Sean R. McClare. Mark F. Babick. Sean D. Patterson. Isaiah H. Ball. Thomas J. Rigney. Dana P. Cody. John D. Rusnak. Brock M. Curry. Emily E. Schultz. Taylor J. Davidson. Andrea G. Shade. Cedric R. Davis. Michael E. Turner II. Christian M. DePinto. Jenny L. Wong. Ashton M. Hannah. Adam J. Ward. Ryan C. Hicks. Riley A. Warns. Michael H. Jerome. Caleb M. Watkins. Jacob S. Kelly. Kevin R. Wolgast. Tyler M. Kapeski. Jose Maria G. Borrego Acosta III. Kaneen O. Manuel. William M. Bridgem. Liam K. McMillan. Monica S. Bursiaga. Daniel W. Messenger. Ethan P. Carr. Sean S. Min. Zachary A. Colson. Sean M. O'Brien. Brock J. Doherty. Drew M. Polchinski. Bridget A. Duffy. Michael A. Renard. Garrett L. Dunn. Joseph P. Rivenber. Dominic M. Franco. Elizabeth L. Sangvik. Ryan H. French. Rachel L. Schlu. Courtney M. Green. Catherine M. Sire. Samuel K. Hauser. Jack E. Sides. Samuel C. Howard. Kiana N. Stewart. Wyatt J. Hoys. Patrick T. Swanton. Michael C. Klein. Yanuel J. Trinidad Vasquez. Kenny H. Lee. Luke J. Werner. Stephen H. Lee. Justin M. Williamson. Miles H. Martin. 
Kendall M. Woodard. Taylor C. Maurer. Forrest S. Zanoni. Morgan A. Morris. Taylor M. Andrews. David J. Pinter, Jr. Chris R. Azelton. Samuel C. Poole. Christopher J. Blanding. Aaron N. Romero. Jack H. Cheng. Luke E. Rose. Grant F. Cullen. Isaac J. Severson. Grant Grace E. Enfinger. J. Young Su. Brandon J. Fast. Kyle J. Suma. Michael A. Graves. James S. Abercrombie. Joseph I. Henry. David C. Anderson III. Aiden R. Keese. Jordan I. Asbury. Christopher J. Kilbride. John W. Becko. Wanha Kim. Francis Z. Castillo de Mulert. Eunice S. Co. Tim Chow, Jr. Peyton R. Leduc. Elliot W. Clyborne. Jong Hock Lee. Isabella Cortez. Cosme A. Lopez, Jr. Connor W. Dunn. Ian D. McKinnon. Mary E. English. Paul M. Moradian. Arthur J. Fan. Demaria A. Morton. Liam C. Fury. Robert E. Osborne. Demar C. Gale. Michael S. Osborne. Natalie R. Hales. Elijah A. Payne. Connor M. Ingelson. Adish Posko from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Bryce V. Johnston. Robert L. Purdy. Amanda P. Lynn. Ross R. Reason. Anchor R. Loesch. Jacob S. Reeser. Dylan L. Query. Kevin R. Seward. John E. Rogacki. Autumn A. Shea. David W. Russell. Connor L. Sprout. Thomas M. Schaefer. Benjamin T. Vasta. Jacquez J. Steen. Benjamin W. Whitlow. Elizabeth L. Taka. Paul T. Williamson, Jr. Kendrick L. Thomas, Jr. From 2nd Regiment, Olivia A. A.G. Jacob A. Thompson. Ryan S. Berry. John E. Van Cleek. Joshua A. Cox. Cameron J. Wilson. Sean D. Coyle. From 4th Regiment, Grant W. Alter. Ty Q. Dang. John R. Anthus. William G. Dietz. Wesley R. Bales. Sean P. Fallon. Christian R. Blevins. Alexander J. Goodenkoff. 
Bridget M. Bordelon. Sarah E. Henderson. Justin T. Cap. Mark W. Jerome. Nicholas B. Bennett Carpenter. Grant Kirstens. Thomas A. C. Edge. Aaliyah C. LeBlu. Viviana L. Gonzalez. John M. Lorenz. Jake T. Homan. Caleb P. Marston. Courtney R. Horace. Ian T. McCool. Brandon J.T. Johnson. Isaac W. McMillan. Daniel D. Coe. Michael J. McTiernan. Sunchal Lee. Nicholas M. Minier. Casper A. Lewis. Gabrielle M. Milanessa. Liam J. McCarthy. Louis A. Palumbo. Michael E. Merritt, Jr. Teresa M. Panchukian. Thomas R. Musgrove. Trevor R. Parker. Ivanka G. Nishore. Sinjin M. Prue. Carlos E. Pineda. Lawrence J. Quintana. Charleston B. Rowe. John P. Royston II. Brandon R. Rogers. Taggart J. Solomon. Gino G. Sapaneri. Gloria D. Sun. David P. Sales. Bradley T. Thrasher. Rachel M. Smith. Angela C. White. Brendan P. Susie. Delilah A. Wood. Drake A. C. Titus. Johanna J. Gure. Matthew R. Wilson. James D. Dorco. Amy T. Zicarello. John P. Econom. Gregory P. Zogby. Cynthia N. Garrett. Jamin F. Ashley. Matthew G. Gastello. Albert G. W. Biddle IV. Zachary J. Gilbert. Lauren M. Booz. Serica J. Halstead. Grace C. Brooks. Richard C. Hansen. Claire K. Callahan. Hayden H. Halp. Andrew R. Carter. Thomas J. Kilcullen. Lucas D. Corey. Aristotle L. Klima. Alexander S. Chung. Justin M. Knoll. Lee R. Cox. Dean D. Lagatuda. Skyler B. Cummings. Edward J. Lee. Eric E. Del Cid. Neil W. Lockwood III. Robert F. Downing. Paul R. Manfredini. Yale A. Flanagan. Mary A. Menard. Preston C. L. Fuller. Eric H. Nino, Jr. Christian J. Halcom. Seth. R. Normington. Morgan M. Hall. David I. Nunez Mejia from Honduras. Yunjun Han. Bethany G. Nunnery. 
Riley D. Jonganil. Catherine D. Ontiveros. Victor W. Gao. Yuan Z. O. Koi S. Kizzy. Ian H. Ramirez. Eric A. McMiller II. Courtney E. Schrade. Sydney R. Morris. Rex A. Scott. David J. Nevereth. Tucker J. Symes. Keenan W. O'Shea. Gavin R. Tom. Zachary D. Petrowski. Brandon J. Tyson. Stephen J. Parada. Gerald J. Walker, Jr. Adea D.C. Queen. Braden J. Welsh. Joshua Ree. Joseph H. Benden. Mason B. Rockman. Dylan R. Burks. Stephen R. Rylander. Houston T. Buxton. Matthew G. Suarez. Ryan J. Campy. Jamar A. Williams. William P. Culleton. Samuel A. Williams. Kevin J. Dupuy. Charles J. Willis. Scott R. Flanick. Andrew J. Winsky. Bailey L. Gable. Rafik J. Antoine. Dalton J. Hanlon. Brendan P. Brown. Christian T. Hayes. Hannah M. Beekner. George A. Horiatus III. Gianluca Cabana. Robert A. Hupful. Jaron K. Carter. Thomas D. Koizumi. Leo P. Chulo. Anthony M. Lavagnino. Jared M. Cochran. John H. Lee III. Philip P. Kutzinger. Angela A. Marsh. Christopher Q. Dow. Corey C. Michelle. Zachary J. Ivancho. Bendy G. Minu. James E. Faco. Ong Mo. Peter E. W. Fenton. William R. Moorhead. Kelsey M. Frizzell. Wyatt E. Morrison. Jacqueline E. Hamrick. Josiah B. Park. Ellison M. Huber. Hannah C. Potter. Lauren E. Carbler. Zane I. Rojas. Lucas J. Conan. Nathan W. Smoot. Simon P. Crunchnabel. Jake B. Sorrells. Kendrick L. Larratt. Justin G. Thomas. Christopher F. Little. Charles S. Wassa. Nikki N. L. Lum. Arthur E. Berry. Vincent T. McFadden. Joseph J. Bianchi. Malik S. Mitchell. Andrew C. Blomquist. Thomas A. Mosier. Ian J. Chambers. Anmul K. 
Narung. Paul E. Karapi. William W. Ackerman. Elizabeth A. Cross. Michael P. Owens. Hannah L. Dinas. Jessen C. Penaflor from the Philippines. Ryan S. Fairbrother. Brody D. Rock. Randall P. Hahn. Benjamin K. Wiggins. Charles C. Landefeld. Thomas B. Almond. Madeline M. Leahy. Jared A. Broussard. Victoria J. Martin. Victor J. Castagno. Shane M. McCarthy. Caleb J. Kluwat. Colleen Y. McDermott. Justin E.T. Cooper. Ethan A. McInturf. Anthony B. Crompton. Thomas M. Monahan. Uli Daladaku from Kosovo. Cameron A. Morello. Michael T. Dillon. Zebulon T. Morgan. Madeline S. Easter. Sarah E. Morrow. Jake R. Gigliotti. Ryan A. Rocca. Justin E. Gross. Victor G. Rutledge. Michael E. Hagelskamp. Corinne M. Schnell. William K. Hellenius. Tanner L. Sheffield. Noah L. Hooten. Kevin W. Shinnick. Jeremiah B. Imanodi. Harrison E. Strickland. Jessica L. Jen. Alan R. Thomas III. Daryl A. Johnson. Alexander E. Tossi. Andrew P. Meyer. Anthony D. Wentz. Josephine M. Marsh. Thomas D. Williams. Kaylin M. Mays. Benjamin Q. Shu. David Medina. Bailey R. Abercrombie. Dade R. Mortimer. Luke J. Adams. Nicole A. Perry. Joseph S. Alcorn. Aiden M. Reardon. Robert B. Anderson. Taylor A. Rhyme. Mary Kate I. Beechler. Christopher D. Scolavino. Jamal M. Brown. Lloyd E. Strickland III. Emiliano Conchatoro. Kyle E. Taylor. Reed F. Diamico. J. T. Yang. John M. DiCiciolo. Shay T. Allen. Ashad T. Ford. Alexandre N. Basagoita. Brianna C. Fox. Benjamin I. Bullock. Malik D. Hancock. Andrew R. Clegg. Hunter J. Hill. Brendan J. Cunningham. James H. Johnson IV. Nakori O. T. Davis. Benjamin L. Jones. David R. Donnan. Taylor J. Corpella. Christian B. Fleggy. Neil Krishnan. 
Noe A. Gallegos. Tesfaye Y. Larmy. Michael J. Hamilton. Connor H. Lewis. Ryan E. Hart. Sean L. Moriarty. Hannah E. Holmesy. William L. Morningstar. Matthew R. Houston. Liam M. Neary. Jackson C. Huffstetler. Samantha M. Rosende. Jasmine S. Jackson. Wei Kong Soon from Singapore. Ashley D. Kim. Justin M. Trapp. Dylan T. Lapore. Cheyenne R. Trilling. Thomas V. May. Francis I. Trivet. Connor C. McDonald. Misha A. Turner. Max G. Messner. Adrian I. Albin. Ian A. Navarro. Keller J. Balsam. Christopher A. Honorato. Jason W. Broder. J. D. Peterson. Brett T. Carey II. Nika S. Pilgrim. Marco C. Carabota. Zachary D. Potter. Gardner S. Crary. Emma K. Rorty. Anna Maria B. Deer. Nicholas D. Steinhaus. Nicole E. Drago. Jonathan M. Trout. Wolfgang C. Drake. Mary A. Bayer. Giovanna C. Ferguson Lewis. Jessica L. Bell. Sochi Y. Fernandez. Savannah S. Bierman. Caitlin K. Gross. Grace E. Blackwell. Grayson O. Hill. Nolan R. Collins. Ashley N. Lassiter. Ricardo A. Damiani. Thomas P. McCauley, Jr. Joshua E. Da Silva. Devin S. Men. Chloe M. Diestel. Kavan A. Moreau. Wyatt E. Espel. Alexander Nosati from Moldova. Joshua L. Fonseca. Matthew R. Panner. Anthony M. George. William M. Prestonburg. Alexander L. Grave de Peralta. Daniel M. Rieger. Adam T. Abair. Zachary C. Reamer. Matthew C. Hoffman. Kathleen M. Sauer. Garrett T. Houston. Seth C. Shields. Harrison C. Jones. Honorino M. Tambori. Jacob W. Manweiler. Ryan H. Von Chance Stutler. John J. McKenna. Levi T. Walters. Joshua L. Meeks. Miranda S. Williams. Bryce A. Malin. John G. Ziomek. Micah J. Moore. David P. Antibian. Ryan F. Parker. Mark A. Baker. Matthew 
J. Penta. Emily C. Ballesteros. Vishnu S. Perry. Nicholas G. Basil. Hunter D. Powell. Luca L. Botis. Lindsay M. Reichard. Anthony E. Capo Bianco. Luther A. Salmon. Mary Claire Cassidy. Monica A. Schmelzenbach. Jatiel D. Klein. Cole A. Stacklin Jarvis. Foster B. Dittmer. Liam T. Stills. Michael R. Anhelig. Jacob E. Trollstra. Liam G. Fury. Brandon M. P. Vega. Taylor N. Graham. Zachary E. Aponte. Alexander J. Hamilton. Matthew R. Arnold. Noah M. Hanau. Nicholas E. Cunningham. Liam R. Kane. Jacob D. Dancer. Russell J. Krause. Richard E. Delzell. Riaz S. Lane. Nihinlolu E. Fatanikun. Asia C. Langley. Thomas R. Gascoigne, Jr. Kajul P. Maheshwari. Ryan A. Grady III. Matthew J. McCarriston. Kevin S. Hong. Callie F. McCullen, McMullen. Devin R. Joseph. Donya M. Nichols. Andrea J. Carlin. John D. Silvers, Jr. Adam P. Carp. Patrick D. Sutherland. Peter T. Kusick. Amelia R. Trotter. Natan S. Lidzier Zmudzinski. Joseph P. Tucker. Thomas J. Milton, Jr. William K. Urig, Jr. Vienna M. Morrison. Sally T. Varner. David C. Nichols. Hunter M. Vogel. Charles M. O'Brien. Daniel L. Watson. Angus P.W. Paradise. Emmanuel N. Aka. Ethan M. Porter. Antonino F. Battaglia. Melanie A. Rig Rigoni. Grace C. Beverage. Christopher B. Robertello. Joseph M. Brantley. Aaron M. Salinas. Trevor D. Brenneman. Ruth A. Talbot. Kenneth A. Brown. Ramsey R. Wagner. Deal A. Joe. Drew P. Bailey. Joseph M. Conlin. Chandler R. Baker. Keneal J. Dixon. Madeline M. Burns. James N. Durst. Glenn S. I. Coates. Cooper T. Fergus. Stephen R. Cromer. Nico C. Fleury. Benjamin D. Harvey. Danielle D. Ginsburg. Nathan P. 
Hine. Jarasi K. Gohill. Noah M. Enman. David J. Heiss. Cameron H. Jones. Christopher E. Hogue. Justin A. Kareem. Sangzu Kwan. Jonathan L. Keating. Kimberly J. Materoso. Brennan J. Koga. Trey J. Neville. Gavin J. Lambert. Philip M. Nunn II. Francisco J. LaForce. Isaiah C. Ortiz. Emily L. McKinney. Jeffrey A. Reffert. James T. Michener. Zane T. Rosencrantz. Ann C. Mulvena. Gregory V. Smith, Jr. Tyler T. Picardit. Henry J. Smith. Kyle A. Rosado. Keiston P. Smith. Michael S. Sewell, Jr. Samantha M. Stewart. Michael S. E. Shin. Allison M. Strong. Timolin A. Sagarel. Seth M. Thompson. Morgan J. Stockdale. Kyle A. Velez. Brian K. M. Suarez. Frank J. Wheaton. Kimmy S. Walker. Sira S. Wolf. Jacob W. Wells. Desmond L. Young, Jr. Gregory S. Brookover. Alex Sipis. Maxwell A. Broughton. Alexander T. Dolan. Megan M. Carroll. Preston T. Drelos. Devante J. Carter Vault. Dylan D. Doobie. Mary S. Serban. Juliana N. Fastolo. Madison A. Curry. Jake A. Girac. Dante A. D'Agostero. Megan E. Gould. Ansley M. Davenport. Adam M. Hudler. Alexander J. Decker. Zaviad Jolokava from Georgia. Kevin D. Du. Nicholas J. Canellis. Lauren K. Fairfax. Jong Yu Kim. Isaac T. Farrell. Jonathan J. Lindstrom. Leah E. Foodman. Donovan C. Lynch. Samuel H. Gordner. Emily E. Malone. Austin A. Gutierrez. Aiden J. McCarthy. Jackson F. Holt. Robert S. Moore. Brendan D. Hewline. Anant Mundra. Elizabeth S. Hookie. Winter C. Nicholas. Archie L. Jungblom. Daniel A. Ferris. Cole M. Kaiser. Galen A. Kiros. Spencer S. J. Lee. Andrew F. Roberts. Nicholas A. Lunsford. 
Stephen M. Scott. Cullen T. McGann. Claire M. Sierna. Hannah R. Mills. Roderick F. Stoddard II. Dion D. Perinon. Daryl J. A. Vincent II. Justin M. Rademacher. Benjamin C. Volbach. Seth D. Ruckman. Matthew W. Ward. Calvin C. Ruyak. Michael R. Worth. Joseph M. Soltemeyer. Michael A. Wilson. Charles M. Worsham. You're heading out to a world that's changing, that's changed. And we need your leadership. We need your brand of leadership. And you're up to the task. So be that change leader. Make a difference. And of course, be Navy. Hey, class of 2020, Joe Foley, class of 1967. Congratulations to all of you as you're about to embark on a great new adventure and endeavor. Just as when we graduated, it was a time of crisis. You're your graduated a time of crisis. But I know you've been trained, I know you do your job, and I'm proud of all of you. Congratulations again. Hi, I'm Bob McDonald, class of 1975. I want to congratulate all members of the class of 2020 on your graduation from West Point. Almost 50 years ago now, uh, I was in Mikey Stadium and I received my diploma from President Ford. Many things have changed since then. The Berlin Wall has fallen, the advent of the personal computer, the iPhone, the internet, uh, many things have changed. And certainly during your careers in the military, many things will change. But with your vision, I'm sure you will succeed. And that's why I want to congratulate you on your graduation with Vision We Lead, Class of 2020. Thank you. Class of 2020, one more time, round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, please join in the singing of the alma mater written by Cadet Paul S. Reinecke, class of 1911. It was first sung for the graduation in 1912. Dance. Attention. Class, attention. Cover. 
Please remain standing while the oath of office is administered to the class of 2020 by the United States Military Academy, Commandant of Cadets, Brigadier General Curtis A. Buzzard. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. Having been appointed an officer in the Army of the United States, in the grade of second lieutenant, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. Please lower your right hand. At this time, please join in the singing of the official Army song, The Army Goes Rolling Along. Covered. Chaplain Polakowski will now give the benediction. For such a time as this, it is right to offer prayers for all who are in positions of high authority that we may lead quiet and peaceful lives. But lieutenants, you are West Point's gift to the Army on its birthday tomorrow. Crapped neatly in new uniforms and stuffed with commitment, competence, and character. As we give you to soldiers and their families, may God strengthen you to serve selflessly, to give yourselves generously, even to the last full measure of devotion, to sustain the vision that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that the government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. Amen. Second Lieutenant Vanderwall, dismiss the class of 2020. Recover. Class of 
class of 2020, dismissed!